Can you do a video on the different dental tools used by hygienists and their purpose? Sure, let's talk. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist here to talk about dental tools, also known as dental instruments. First, let's start with a probe, which is the periodontal measuring tool. It's like a little ruler in millimeters. It measures the space between your gums and your teeth. The numbers one, two, and three mean you have very healthy gum tissue. Again, when measuring the space between the gums and the teeth, whereas a four can indicate some inflammation, maybe some concern, maybe some gingivitis. And if the probe drops into a pocket of five millimeters and up, the higher numbers can indicate either there's severe inflammation or even bone loss and periodontal disease. So the probe, the measuring tool, is used to determine which type of cleaning you need. A regular cleaning for healthy gums or a deep cleaning, also known as scaling and root planing for unhealthy gums. Usually routine probing numbers aren't taken on kids. We often wait until you're an adult around age 18 for a full mouth periodontal chart. Now, oftentimes on the other end of the probe, there's an explorer. Sometimes it will be on its own or it will be an instrument with two sides. The one side is the probe and the other side is the explorer. The hook explorer, like right here, is used to check around the teeth during your exam, during your checkup. Dentists use it a lot for their exams, but we, the hygienists, use it often too, especially to check the occlusals, the chewing surfaces for any sticky spots, which can indicate tooth decay, and we'll even check around the sides of each tooth for tartar or any grainy or clickable areas of buildup. But an even better explorer to check for tartar buildup is this one, called the 1112 explorer. This shape is great in tartar detection, by the way, tartar is also known as calculus. I'll link my dental terminology video below if you'd like to learn more medical dental terms. Anyway, before scaling or after scaling, we'll talk about scalers in just a sec, these 1112 explorers adapt around the tooth better than the hook when walking it around each surface of each tooth. Basically, it helps us check if any buildup is there before the cleaning and after the cleaning to make sure we didn't miss anything. Now the scalers. Scalers, also known as hand instruments or the scrapers, as many patients call them. There are many different shapes that are used for different teeth, so we're looking at the middle part, not the handle. The different handles are just for different ergonomic comfort for the clinician. But for your teeth, the metal part will tell us if they are to be used on the front teeth or the back teeth. So for the anterior teeth, also known as the front teeth that you see when we smile, we use the anterior scalers, which tend to have less bends, less curves. Also with each one, you flip it over for different sides of teeth. So depending on how the blade angles, you will use, say, this side for the surfaces toward you and this side for the surfaces away from you different side for different surfaces of each tooth. Now, for the posterior back teeth scalers, they are usually more curvy. They have more of a bend. Same thing, once you know how it wraps or fits around the tooth, you'll know which side to use for different surfaces of each tooth. But overall, scalers are the pointy teeth cleaning instruments that have a sharp end. You can also use a curette to clean teeth as well, which is another type of hand instrument. They are usually not as pointy. Some people like to use curettes versus scalers depending on a bunch of different things, whether you're working on a heavy area of tartar or a light area of tartar the tooth shape or anatomy, whether you need to stay above the gum line or go below the gums. Speaking of going below the gums, there's also special curettes called Gracie curettes. They are extremely area specific, so you can get the correct positioning when needing to get into hard to reach specific areas. So, okay, posterior versus anterior is one thing. Like if you really needed to use a posterior universal scaler or a posterior universal curette throughout the entire mouth, you technically could. But with Gracie curettes, they have exaggerated angles, so they are really made to be used on specific teeth, one for the premolars, one for the mesials of the posteriors or the front areas of the back teeth, and for the distal of the posteriors or for the back areas of the back teeth. Overall, a combination of both curettes and scalers will often be used during a teeth cleaning appointment, especially for deeper cleanings when hygienists have to get creative regarding difficult areas of tartar. When it's more difficult to reach, you have to use different types of instruments, right? And if it's a basic routine cleaning, oftentimes it's simply the hygienist's preference. Most offices have a basic setup. What's put on the tray for all cleaning patients, usually including one anterior scaler, one posterior scaler, one curette, a probe, and an explorer, and of course a mirror. But every office is different and the exact instruments on the basic setup can vary. If you need any additional instruments throughout an appointment, they will usually be bagged separately so you can get what you need as you need it. Next up, the ultrasonic scaler. What it is, it's similar to a regular scaler, of course, but this one has water coming out of it. They can be called either piezos or cavitrons. It all depends on the vibration 
vibrations, but the ultrasonic scaler in general uses a combination of both ultrasonic vibrations and high pressurized water to remove tartar, plaque, and stain. Personally, I use this on almost every single adult patient and I just dial it either up or down depending on how much buildup they have. I use a very low setting if it's slight buildup and I use a higher setting if it's heavy buildup, heavy plaque and tartar, especially for SRP's deep cleanings. Ultrasonic scalers are really great for the gums and when you use a combination of ultrasonic scalers and hand instruments, it's considered the most thorough cleaning. At the end, we usually polish. Oftentimes we'll use a cup and paste polish where it's mint flavored or you get to pick the flavors. It's nice and gritty and crunchy until we rinse it off and then your teeth are nice and smooth. You get that fresh and so clean, clean feeling. There's also the air polisher, another option that goes like psh, psh. That's the one where they spray a baking soda to air polish. And every office might have slightly different polishing systems, but overall, the main tools we use as dental hygienists include the probe, the explorer or the explorers, the anterior scalers, posterior scalers, curettes, area specific curettes, ultrasonic scalers, and polishers. If you want to watch a full teeth cleaning appointment with all those instruments, I will link that video below and you'll be able to see how the different instruments are used in different areas of the mouth. And if you're someone who is interested in the dental hygiene career, I made a free RDH video checklist especially for you because I get lots of questions and comments and messages asking me about how to become a dental hygienist. So whether you are in high school, college, or looking for a career change, whatever the case, if you're interested in learning everything there is about the RDH career, be sure to click the link in the description box below to sign up for my free RDH video checklist. And I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. And if you want even more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website teethtalkgirl.com and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.